Space is not the final frontier. There is a vastness yet to be discovered, a realm of mystery and imagination, a place of lasting peace and joy. You know there is more to life. You know you have heard and seen things that no one can explain. We welcome you to come up higher. Join us in our search for the ultimate adventure, the ultimate conflict, and the ultimate romance. Discover the secrets of the heavenly places. Hello and welcome to Asin's Place, Exploring Heavenly Places. So far today we've been talking about authorities. We've started to discuss the biblical foundation for where that word comes from as one of many kinds of spiritual beings. We've talked about how they can be discerned and then we're going to possibly consider that study or we may move on to something else depending on what God's doing. As always, I want to point out our focus is to follow God's lead. So let's see where he takes us next. Dad? Welcome back. <clears throat> For you that are listening to the recording, <clears throat> we, we actually record four one-hour sessions in one day, um, but not knowing whether there's going to be a link between each one or they're going to be separate. So as Brian said, we <clears throat> began the first hour talking about authorities. And uh, I had begun just off the cuff talking about unity, not knowing that Jen had received a word. And you received this word this morning, last night. So I, I think I'm just talking, trying to connect the dots. And I've, I've learned over and over again that actually the Lord is involved. You know, a lot of times, in fact, most of the time, if it's righteous, he's giving us our thoughts. And, uh, and we're thinking his thoughts. And so I think I'm just maybe just trying to fill the time up or trying to connect things and do it logically, and the Spirit is saying, no, it's me, and I'm, I'm doing this. And so she had this word, remember I talked about in the first hour, about unity and the fact that we're, we're doing this together, we need to get rid of the, uh, the infection and the trash so that we can, so each part can do their part, so each joint can supply, remember that? That was in the last hour. So Janet, give the word, and I know that you keep on giving some uh, Hebrew there, so if you'd be sure to translate the Hebrew, I, have to, I do this all the time with Janet. She gets things by revelation. <laughs> and then, okay, Janet, tell me what you just said. So I was, you know, just trying to mind my own business, watch TV, and, and um, I got it interrupted. <laughs> so this is the word. Yagado el. Unity, unity, it's more than you think. One will put a thousand to flight. You all are standing on the brink. For the Lord your God will fight for you, for Yahweh, Yehovah, Elohim, fights for you. Gadim Elohim is a habitation. The council of the court of the Lord is your destination. Alam Alam is a resting place for this generation. All are connected by his light. The sound of unity is in the spirit and is a good fight. Realms upon realms into greater heights, the depths of God from the inside plight. This generation will align, so Yah Kebab will be defined. Yeah, what's Kebab? Oh, uh, um, God of Glory. That's right. I just want to see if you knew. I, I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> wind of change, a wind of destruction, a wind to blow away the chaff. Another win for the harvest and the enemy for destruction. Zion has a sound. Heaven is around. You are all around. Forgive your adversary quickly. Take God's judgment so you won't be guilty. If you know who you are and know, known by Yah, I will give you a place with those standing here. Wow. You will judge his house. The truth you will hear. For the God of heaven is with you and very near. How majestic is his name, Malek Gabab Hashem, Gadosh. Okay, translate that. Um, 
Malekah's king. Yeah, king, um, glory. king of glory, is um, king of glory. His name, holy one of Israel, Kadosh Israel, Kadim Elohim. Seek His Majesty. Seek the King. Kadim Elohim is the eternal God. Thank you. The Lord had asked me to pray and fast this week. There were some real crucial things that I. I needed breakthrough on and um, it was interesting because a friend of mine posted this picture and um, sent it to me on my Facebook and it's literally Jesus riding a horse this oh. week in the clouds I mean it's and this was the scripture hey, that I got the mic needs to stay. and this was the scripture I got was their appearance is like the appearance of horses and like the swift steed so they run with the noise of chariots over the mountains they leap like the noise of the flaming fire that devours the stubble like a strong people set in battle array excellent that is joel 2 4 and 5. joel 2 4 and 5. Yeah, the joel army <clears throat> now brian you had some questions that came up the last session so i think we'll look at those first and <clears throat> the lord is really good to me so I'm going along here discerning because I know that I have another hour coming up. So you, th you just sit there and you think, well, this is really easy. Well, no, because I'm paying attention. So about the last 10 minutes, the Lord showed me what's going to happen next. But I, again, I have probably a minute. So <laughs> we'll have the questions first so we can uh, make sure that we're participating. And again, if you want to... Um, if you're online and you want to understand what you're discerning or you have a question... Uh, we'd like to have you do that also, but you have to give us a warning. So let Brian know uh, by sending the chat in, and then we can get you on the screen, because we'd like for you to be participating too. And I think Larry Pearson is online with us from Canada, so we like Larry having we like having Larry with us. Okay, Brian. Okay, so um, we'll start with, uh, we have three so far right now. We'll start with Cindy. She had asked a question um, saying that her mom has developed dementia, and having hallucinations. Um, her mom is saved, family saved. They're, they're struggling a lot with this and they're wondering if there's anything specific that could be done when there's that kind of a disorder. Years ago I started learning the principle that, <coughs> that we are affected spiritually, generationally. And the key is, I think, if we can deal with it sooner than later, then what is the spiritual that will not take place in the physical? We know, for example, that there's kinds of schizophrenia that lock in around somewhere between 18 and age 21. Um, it's very interesting that uh, this is scientifically proven. Psychiatrists know about this. Well, what happens if we could deal with that issue uh, before then? Maybe even deal with it genetically. The Lord is teaching us how to discern the, the genome and uh, what we call the karyotypes, or the, uh, I feel so educated, or the chromosomes. So I can actually kind of put my finger and I can discern them. So if we can take care of that problem, ask the Lord to take care of that problem before it happens, then once, then it will not, I believe, set in to the physical body. So this is an issue where something has now set in to the physical body, and <clears throat> so the question is, is there anything that can help? Well, we always can pray, and we are believing that the Lord is in the process of giving us understanding that will break open some of these issues that are very current dementia, Alzheimer's, and um, other issues um, that we are seeing manifest today. When we decided to stop doing our schools because what would happen is I started doing a school and the Lord was taking me out here. And so I'm trying to drag everybody along so I, they understand all the basic stuff, but I'm flying around out here and I thought, we, we just can't keep doing this. And so I felt it was the Lord. So we actually recorded two schools, which used to cost $250. Mm -hmm. They're now free online. In school one, uh, we always would do an example generational prayer. And so in school when we have that, actually the current recording of Exploring Heavenly Places, number one, 
where you do an app update on, on that one. But I was doing that one for the last school, which was at Victorian, actually, yes. recorded there. In the olden days, when we first had started olden recording. Days? The olden days. And uh, so I was sitting there with this lady, and she had volunteered to have generational deliverance. And I sat there, and I, I kept on, could not remember. I could not remember what I was saying. And I would go, and it was really awkward, because this is being recorded. You can see the recording. I'm going, and I finally, after I don't know how many minutes, it seemed like a 1,000 hours. I finally said, do you have trouble forgetting? And she said, all the time. And I thought, great. The Lord just allowed me to experience where you are. And uh, Becky Menderman then had had a word about the place of forgetfulness. And it's actually in the Bible, in Psalm 88. And I believe this is where Alzheimer is in dementia. So it's in the place of forgetfulness, Psalm 88. So I'll just have you, you can read Psalm 88 later and then also look at the, um, at the school one. Uh, like verse 15, I've been afflicted and ready to die for my youth. I suffer your terrors, I'm distraught. Your fierce wrath has gone over me. Your terrors have cut me off. They come around me all day like water. They engulf me all together. Loved one and friend you have put far from me and my acquaintances into darkness. So there is this total disconnection between the person what's going on outside. I believe that we can take care of that early. So in other words, you see that pattern in the family line? That's when you pray. I'm not saying it cannot be dealt with with this lady, but... So it could be good for, for in this situation, for her to pray and ask God to remove her mother out of place of forgetfulness. Which is in the ungodly depth. <laughs> or in fact, in the ungodly place. In the depth, be, yes. Yeah. And we also have uh, Prayer Release 1 from the Ungodly Depth, yep. which is free online. You can just go there. So it's Prayer Release 1 from the Ungodly Depth. Uh, we'll pray that over her. Yeah, and from the website, uh, on the search box, it's actually somewhat quicker. You could type just a key word from the title. So if you type depth, then you'll see not only the prayer, but some other resources. Yeah, D-E-P-T-H. Depth. Yes, depth. Gianna? Yeah. Uh, microphone? This is an exploration, correct? Yes, yes, it is. Now, I'm walking through some things, and Paul, work with me, and, and I'm hoping this is where you're going. Um, uh, Go ahead. With the table? The elemental? Maybe. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm feeling elemental spirits. I do feel them now, yes. Yeah. But there's so, something else first. So I just realized, too, when you mentioned Psalm 88, that was um, Dr. Tom Hawkins' yes. foundation for the courts. Oh. Just wanted to bring that up. And I'm just wondering, like, we got that early enough. You present those accusations, then cleanse the DNA and regenerate the yes. elements. Just thought. Yes. I would bring that up. <laughs> we have, uh, we had developed a tool that I'm still experimenting with, but uh, I don't know if I should say this, because Brian will get the emails. It's called a, a spiritual diagnostic where we actually have a picture of the brain, picture of the karyotypes of the chromosomes, a picture of the skeletal system, the nervous system, the respiratory system. And I take my finger, and I think you can do this too, and you can feel where there's difficulties. So if you're praying for a person, you can use that to diagnose what's going on with them. And also on the periodic table. So <laughs> I laugh because Brian really understands this much better than I do. So I have... I can feel these elements. I think, well, what's the problem? I don't really, I can't know what that word is, but I know that's a problem. And what we're finding out is that the fallen sons of God have done experiments on the DNA and RNA. And this is, there's all sorts of information about this now. And I think they have experimented with the elements, which have then resulted in problems. And so you can pray and say, Lord, clean off these elements. And so anyway, we have that tool if you're interested in seeing that. Well, what I would say is, once it's ready, then I'll send an announcement out to the Asin's Place list. That right? is very wise. And and it's ready, so we will send that out. So if, uh, so if you could go to asinsplace.com and click on the little subscribe to our email, and then that's where I always put out the notices when we've released something new. And then I just want to go ahead and point out again, we talk about these resources, whether it's a periodic table or something else like that. We are not figuring out ourselves what is going on with each element. 
we're using our hand for God to tell us the information by helping us with our Absolutely. senses. And so it's, it's just a tool, but it, we're not solving a problem by just having that table. The information is coming from God. Absolutely. And then we continue to test. Yes. Um, this is just going back to um, Psalm 88, when we're talking about Alzheimer's and dementia. Right. I was just wondering about, like, um, that would apply with autism as well because of the disconnect? Um, probably, though, I had a dream the last week, and I don't know whether we're going to deal with that today, but the Lord gave me, I think, a key to autism. Uh, maybe. Well, he's, that's what the, in the dream he said it is. And we've only now, just yesterday... I did a prayer session with someone that we started dealing with that dream. And so I may talk about that later. We're about to see where we go. Uh, I, it's intriguing. Well, I'd love to talk to you about it later. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'd love to talk to me about it also. <laughs> Remember, some, um, sometimes we're, there, there are degrees of revelation that occurs. And... There's things that are going on with the inner team or whatever that we would never put out because we can't <laughs> justify it against the Bible yet. So some things are really stretched out there, and then over time it gets beaten up until it's, you, it's back We're in the so, so there may not be anything more we can expand on that. But, and there could be pieces, but I think it is important that we, we, we put out the levels that we feel comfortable because there could be others who have a piece. And that's why we may bring that out because it, really, it is very, very complex in terms of the genetics and then the stars and everything else. And so. But again, it'll be to explore, not explore. to just declare. We will not, we, oh no, we will we not can't, declare. We uh, can't put a stamp on it and say that. We will solid. not declare. Okay, you want, I have a, one. Yeah, one question there. And then you can do the question here first and then we'll have to. Okay, while we're passing the mark, well, let's see, it could be on topic. So go, we'll go ahead and. Will you talk at all about interdimensional frequency Ooh. of DNA? <laughs> so, so thanks for the softball question. <laughs> we, we may or may not do that. but <laughs> So that's one we can put a pin on. I thought I'd type. <laughs> yeah, put a pin. <laughs> It'll, it's an interdimensional pin. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, so uh, we had a person online who had asked this question saying, I was pointing out, we were talking about how everyone has the same connection to authority and revelation through Jesus Christ. And the person posed the question that there, there are ministries out there that have manifestations of God's glory occurring. For instance, there's, we're seeing things like water turning into wine or gemstones, gold flakes, oil coming out of the Bible. And then this person's pointing out that oftentimes they're accused of participating in witchcraft and or you know things like their satanism and so the, he then put the question how would you help them so i have a few things to say one we have to always ensure that no matter how far out there we're getting we everyone needs to make sure where their foundation is it's uh when we had our youth group for instance uh when we started to introduce the concepts of supernatural the supernatural world and spiritual beings I had already spent a long time on biblical foundation on, on the, the truth of the gospel who Jesus Christ is but the moment I did it th you know then we had some kids who went home and they were fighting demons all night in the room they were picking up on all this stuff because they were aware of it so then they but then it became about this battle and not about God so we have to remember to keep our focus on him but it can also go the other way it could be about what's the show What's the fanfare versus what is God doing? So we have to be careful of that, that we make sure we keep the focus on that. But, there's, but Jesus actually had to address that same exact question in his time. And it's Mark chapter 3, verses 23 through 25. Uh, so he called to himself and said to them in parables, how, how, which is, it says in parables, but that's really direct. If only all of them were that direct. How can Satan cast out Satan? Right. If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. So why would it be that people would be practicing witchcraft that brings glory to God and brings, reveals what God is doing and people want to come closer to Him? They don't want to come closer to Satan or, or witchcraft because they're... And, and we have to just make sure that anytime these events occur, 
like we do here, we talk about discernment. It's never about us. It's what's God doing, and we're blessed to be able to be a part of it, but it's, it's all God. So how could, would you help them? Say, join the club you know, of others that are accused. Seems like the more we get into the supernatural world, you could also just say, um, it's, it's in the Bible. You know, look at how wacky Some things get is. in there. I mean, look at living creatures. Yes. You talk about interdimensional beings. We have wheels within wheels and eyes with wings on, you know, and eyes and wings. And so there's some really far out stuff there. Um, but I guess that's just to say the, this God is amazing and is revealing new amazingness Amazing. all the time. So, you know, we, we can't just stop to start to shut people down just because it's something we don't understand. I'm sorry, I'll say one last thing. Yeah, so when respond. did Satan become more powerful than God? That's correct. How yes. is it that witches can demonstrate things, psychics can do their things, but Christians can't tap into the truth and they're automatically heretics? Okay. Come on. We have had, um, years ago we were in Germany and we were with a group of youth and this one kid started having oil drip out of his hands. And we've been many places where gold has shown up. Now, I'm not usually someone where, where we are that there's, it pours out all the time, but we've had gold show up. I remember when, um, um, when Jewel started showing up in northern Idaho, uh, a friend got me on the phone with this guy, and I, I discerned they were God. So I have a simple answer to the question. What happens if something really strange happens? Or what happens if I suggest something really strange? Or you suggest something really strange. Here's the key. We all discern together. The problem is, is most leaders do not ask your opinion. See? And so if we're going to get into a um, borderline area, then what I would say is, first of all, Brian, what do you think? And I might even stop the meeting. I've done this when I'm doing conferences. I will pull the pastor aside or the leader aside, and we'll discuss it first. I remember the first time Elijah showed up, and I felt like he was going to give a mantle. To his, and we were in Ireland. I felt like the Lord was going to give a mantle to his son. And so I pulled my friend Nigel uh, into a, a different room, and I said, I think Elijah's here. I think he wants to give his, your son a mantle. And he got really quiet, and he said, you will not believe this. But a prophet told me at the birth of my son that one day he would receive the mantle of Elijah. I thought, okay, we've got a confirmation. Now, I've I got to be really careful because I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that what this is, is wrong, but I, I had a prayer session with a person who has really been beat up by leaders because of the strange stuff she's been involved in. And she was at a meeting where someone was talking about injecting Jesus like a needle into your arm and then getting a high. Now, first of all, that really bothers me. But let's say that so what do we do with discern? Now, the, the truth is, what she did caused tremendous spiritual problems. And I don't think it was God. Now, it could be. I, don't, I, 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 I can't judge that. But what I can say is that any time, get really forceful, any time, the light happens, then you need, you need to judge it. You need to judge That is biblical. 1 Corinthians 14, the prophets judge the prophets. And if you are not wrong to question, I am not offended if you say, I'm not sure about that. Brian's done this. I'm not sure about it. My wife does it all the time. I'm not sure about that. And I'll, okay, okay, I'll back off. And I'll wait. And sometimes it may be a matter of timing, especially with Brian and Donna. And for me, it's, it's a, you know, I get so far out there, and it's like, Dad, cool your jets. Okay, okay, I need to do that. You see... Because we submit one to another. And, and I think it's all right. Now, you're not, if this happens to me, you don't go and talk to someone else. That's divisive. The Lord does not love division. You talk to the leader. Now, the leader does not respond. That, for me, is a clear indication that there may be something wrong. It doesn't mean it automatically is wrong, but it could be a clear indication that something is wrong. But you see, we're not used to this. I, I was in the South, and as they came to me, he says, Paul, you don't understand. We have been taught not to express our opinion. And, and we have been beat up so much, especially, I might add, women. 
Every time a woman expresses her opinion, she's a Jezebel. <laughs> like, oh my word. Like, give, I mean, Jezebel has to be so overworked. Oh. I know, it's just like, <laughs> the poor evil spirits are so worn out. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that, that's what I would do. And, and I think it means where if there's something strange that would happen, then I would stop and say, well, what do you think? Are, are we all right? You know, is, is this okay? I've done this many times. Is this okay? Are we okay? We, we also, we actually received an email quite recently and it's, it's as if there's a template that this kind of person follows. And, and it basically goes along with this. You need to focus on the call of salvation and, and, um, and the harvest. You're too far out there. Why are you bothering with all of this stuff? And, and so, then, so uh, th- my response was delete. Because his heart, <laughs> his heart wasn't, he didn't want to know. He was, he trying, was to trying to shut me down. So my answer to this is look at the world today. We do not have a bunch of people who ride around on camels or, and have sandals and build mud huts. We have people who every movie sometimes in the theater addresses the supernatural world. We have more awareness of science and the world around us than ever before. And the Bible tells us that all their creation brings glory to his name. So when we are out and exploring the heavenly places, we are actually speaking to people on the level that everywhere else is already speaking to them on. It's just that we are coming with the truth as well. So we are speaking to the harvest. We are speaking to the hearts of the people because that's where they're at. And, but it's the, it's the truth and not, not just fantasy. <clears throat> yes, in fact, that's a wonderful segue to right. where we're, we're going to go next. Barbara Parker, I think you're online with us now. I, I think I can see her. There she is. She's getting close to the camera. <clears throat> Barbara and I are now working on Exploring Heavenly Realms, Volume 4, which is power in the, in the heavenly places. And when we had done, I think it was the last, of the uh, internet TV programs, um, I had this idea to look up the word heaven in scripture. This actually goes very clear to what Brian has been talking about. I found out in the Old Testament that the word heaven is never singular, it's only plural. And I went through every single verse. So what are the heavens? Well, the heavens are the dimensions. So the scientific word, word are the heavens. Then I thought, well, I, I, I kind of looked at a couple places in the New Testament, I thought, oh, it's going to be singular only. Nope. Many, many times it's plural. Now, this is amazing. Do you know that we have been praying the Lord's Prayer wrong? I was, I was so shocked. And I had to, Brian had to help me here because I made a mistake. But this is what it says in the Greek. Our Father who is in the heavens... How be the, thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, singular. So it says, our Father who is in the heavens. And over and over again, it talks about the heavens. Now, when I started looking at this, especially when you looked at the Old Testament, God created the what? The heavens and the earth. Now, if you're watching current movies, reading current <laughs> books, current TVs, programs, it's all about the dimensions and about parallel universes and all this. And you start looking at the Bible, what the Bible actually says, and so Barbara's pushing me now to to write that chapter that will probably be the last chapter in the book, we think. And it was an amazing discovery. The Bible talks about the rain in the heavens. So it's not only physical rain, there's spiritual rain. Now we have been, some of us have been in churches and we have felt the spiritual rain. I don't know if you've been there, I have. Not only that, could there be different kind of rain in different kind of dimensions? And then how complicated does this get? And there's birds in the heavens. Not the heaven, 
There's birds in the heavens. Oh, I have a eagle that sits on my shoulder. Isn't that? But that's very bizarre. But it does. And I don't, don't often pay attention, but he's there. Well, because you see, there's physical birds and there's spiritual birds. There's birds, and this is all friends. This is biblical. The birds are in the heavens. Barbara, do you want to add anything to that? It's in the Bible. <laughs> I love Barbara because she is a biblical person also, and, and this is very important. Now, there's a reason why Brian did that segue, that I could do this segue, to where we're going, which is only I have a little part of. I was with a lady in Pittsburgh who got this, and <clears throat> I said, <clears throat> there's, I think there were three of them, um, the lady, her mother, and I think her father, and there were two different locations. I said, I'm feeling something, and, and the mother said to me, you're in the library of heaven. I said, oh, I can feel that. So what I, I feel library right here. I feel it's like half my head, so it's here back, and I'm in the library of heaven. So right now, say, Laura, I'd like to discern the library in heaven. And remember, you can, you can do this whether you're watching, recording, or at home as well. So I had this thought. This has now been maybe a year and yesterday, I, I, I prayed with a client um, who is DID, very complex, and we spent the entire time in the ungodly library asking the Lord to dismantle it and to establish the godly library. And I'm thinking, I wonder if this is biblical. You know, I, I have these thoughts because it's a good thought. You know, it, it is biblical. And so I, got, I, I asked the Lord, and he said, Books. I thought, books. Okay. So look at Daniel 7.10. And what happened to me yesterday is that there was a part of this lady, and it was actually a female, a, a girl part, who was stuck in the ungodly library and was drawing on information from the enemy, which would be the, tr the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I'm just remembering Interstellar is all about that library. Oh! It is. And it's multidimensional. That's true, Brian. Okay. Matter yes. of fact, he did not communicate <laughs> with the present realm without going through the library. Through the books. I forgot that. Daniel 7. We call this the Ancient of Day Court. That's what the Bible calls it, actually. I watched, uh, 7 9, Daniel 7 9. Uh, I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. I have to tell you, uh, this last week with another person, we were in the library. Oh, no, the Lord took us to the Ancient of Day court. And uh, we had a friend, friend that was interceding with me, and he described the Ancient of Day the same way other people have which is he has this long beard, and it's like Father Time beard. And see, this is, this is God as the ancient days, and this court predates all of creation. So anybody, especially the fallen sons of God who say that they are the ancient ones, incidentally, listen for that term, when you're, even when you're in church. When people say, I've been talking to the ancient ones, that's probably the fallen sons of God. There's only one ancient one. Got it? There's, the sons of, fallen sons of God are not the ancient ones. That's what they want to be, but they're created. He is the ancient one. And his, the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, his wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and look at this, and the books were open. So the books were open, and if you go to um, Revelation 20, 12, and I saw the dead, great and small, small and great, standing before God, and books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, so... 
Isn't that interesting? I just caught this. The dead are judged according to the book. So all these, all these things that happen seem to be written in books. Now it also appears, and probably scriptures, but I can't pull them out of my head right now, where we are given a scroll or a book at the beginning. I actually can discern the, a book at the beginning, in which I be, believe what you would call then your birthright, or we use the word destiny. I try, still try to oh, avoid the word destiny because the, the destiny actually means, the, excuse me, the word destiny actually means based on good luck. Um, by definition, look it up. But it's used all the time, and so I, I've given up. But anyway, yes, question on the, on the mic. Again? Uh, did that fall, Psalm 40, verse 7? Psalm 40. This is why I say it's good to have other people here. Read that. Then said I, and lo, I come, for in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Yea, your law is within my heart. Excellent. Thank you. I knew that was in there somewhere. I'm going to underline that. That Psalm, I need to remember that, Lord, Psalm 40. So what has happened is that we go to the library. This last week, I had a new thought. I think we each have a library. Or, or maybe the generational line, probably more the generational line. So there's a generational line that has a library, and in the library are... You use the word scroll, which is Old Testament, New Testament, or you use the word books. We use the word book today. And there appears to be that potential in our family line. So we have our own potential. And then, just to make it more confusing, I think the books are interdimensional. And I think the family line, as the family line you know, splits, and I think the, the line actually becomes interdimensional. And then, so these books are interdimensional books, and it gets very, very complex. And so I... I can feel this library. Now, this gets very strange. Then I realize, I realize I can feel a librarian. So I feel the librarian. So I feel the librarian now. So the librarian is here, forward. Okay, so say, Laura, I'd like to discern the librarian. <laughs> now think about this. If we need to draw on the Lord's knowledge, not the enemy's knowledge, then would it be good to make sure that no generational parts that affect us or no parts of us are affected by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which would be all the esoteric and all the human wisdom? This, this is a huge issue now. Because we're... We're not drawing upon God. We're drawing drawing upon human knowledge. Most of you are aware now that we in the organized church have been deeply and profoundly affected by the Greek mindset. I was in, I'm going to say this very, I'm going to have to tell the story very carefully because this is being recorded. I was in Europe, very close to Greece. And a person started having to argue with me about whether or not you need to repent. And, and it became, I th- I'm thinking, where is this coming from? Uh, you know, well, repentance is in the Bible. It says, well, it only says confess. Actually, we found a verse that does say repent. But, but the argument, and it became all about human knowledge. And, and I realized it was what the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. That's, Brian, you talked about this. And so there was all this argument going on all the time. It was all based upon human knowledge. And we, we have become very, very impressed by knowledge. We would select leaders because they seem to be smart. Not understanding that it's God's wisdom that we need to have, not man's wisdom. Just because you know stuff does not make you smart. It means you have a good memory. That's a good quote. I might keep that one. That might be profound. Who knows? Um, and we need to be drawing upon the Lord God, the spirit of wisdom. He is wisdom. He is wisdom. 
Okay, now something very interesting has happened. Is there's been a manifestation of evil now? Are you aware of that, Brian? Did you pick that up? No. Yeah. So I'm wondering if we need to ask the Lord to extract any parts of us. This is kind of a surprise for me. Out of the ungodly library, so that we draw only upon the word. So let me let me tell you. The, uh, I agree with you. There's something that needs to be addressed here. Okay. Let me tell you the tidbits that I was picking up on and pondering here. Um, Oftentimes when we work with people in ministry, generational prayer, I find that guilt is rampant, and the enemy uses it. And so I, I don't want to take too far off topic, but I, I use the training a puppy analogy. Uh, when, when they make a mistake on the carpet, we train a puppy, we take the puppy's nose and say, no, look what you did. Well, that's the enemy. So look what you did, and then you rub your nose in, and then like pointing it out constantly, versus the Holy Spirit who says, that happened, that's not okay, let's correct it. And then once you repent, it's done. So the enemy always has it in your face. So, uh, and so I, I battled that with Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So, but what I'm wondering is if, if the enemy has an ability through sin, that of course, to make false copies of the books. And so when we repent... God erases that from the, right from his book, but the enemy may still have a false copy that is still tr holding on to. Mm -hmm. And so, so there's what I'm wondering is we need to ask God to remove false copies. We have also found that, that pages can be inserted into our book by the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, our letters <coughs> blocked out. Okay, you need on the mic. Yeah, I'm sorry. Letters blocked Watch out. Your, I have a scripture here. Okay. I think it'd be important before you start discerning, because I think it lines up with this. It was in um, Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, Ecclesiastes, uh, twelve. The words of a wise man are like goods, what you just said, and masters of these collections are like well-driven nails. They are driven by one shepherd. But beyond this, my son, be warned. The writing of many books is the endless and excessive devotion to books is wearing on the body. <laughs> then you've got also, you've got to think of John 21, 25. Many things were happened that weren't written in the scriptures. In the scriptures. But Jesus and did. if they were, then the earth couldn't contain all the books. Is that, you thought about that? Yeah. That's a lot of stuff that must That's have happened. That's a lot happened. of stuff. Look at the creativity the enemy would steal. Yep. Brian has had a discussion with me that <clears throat> we want to be sure that we include everybody in giving words. And so I felt angels show up, and so I'm thinking, well, am I going to go to Jana or Larry, and I get no. And I thought about you, and I, you, I think you may have something, but Brian actually has the message, I think. You, I, I think knew you, that I, would backfire on me if yeah, I said we need to include so, but I think, people. I think you do have something. So you want to listen? And you willing to listen? I don't think we've done this together, have we? So I think, the, I think I'm not going to get up and I'll go over and discern you. In fact, why don't you come here? So. And then if we get the microphone And Brian, there is please. part of the messages from you. Okay. It may, Can, may I, I, I declare it proactively? It may be the prayer. Already. Oh, the prayer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, you have an angel has his hand right here. So now I think you, you're a seer also. Mm -hmm. So you may see something or you may hear words. So. What I, saw okay. what I saw before, when you were talking about the books, uh -huh. I actually saw a book, like almost like a window, but it was a book like from about here back. And then the so Lord, From where back? Like from about here. So that's where I feel. Yeah. Well, is this our scroll? No, it's, our, it's a book. Yeah. It's a book. Mm -hmm. I saw it, and what I heard was the Lord say, Deuteronomy 28, Choose this day. Which are the blessings? Like what of the blessing or cursing, exactly. life or death, what book you're going to write in. What book, what, what you're writing in your book. Uh, see how clever the Lord is? Now, if I was in my Baptist church preparing a sermon, then I would prepare a series that would, because that, I, I try to be very logical, so make sure that the one sermon flows, but also the, the next sermon flows into that. Now, we're doing it this way, and 
So we have authorities in the, more, the first session, right? Mm -hmm. And then I gained the library, and I thought, well, what does that have to do with the authorities? These, these thoughts come through my mind. And he, and he just, and you just said, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. it has to do with the curses and blessings. Mm -hmm. So now we now have a linkage. We have a linkage between the mm -hmm. first session and this session. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I don't feel the. Oh, there's still a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Then, then. Okay, so what what it says in First uh, Corinthians four: If someone raises their hand or stands up, mm -hmm. then then you sit down. So okay. I'm gonna have you actually stand. Okay. But I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Jenna say something. And we're trying to do this biblically. It actually says in the Bible, and this is an interesting thought. <clears throat> I, I remember when I was studying the, the gift of prophecy, people would say, well, I have this word, and it must be delivered. And, of course, the argument biblically is, well, that's true. Then, then when that person has to sit down, do you, does, do you lose that? No. No, see? No. No. So no. get over yourself. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you have something to say? I have some insight, yeah. Okay. Um, and there's an still... angel on me, too, so I don't know what. Um, yes, no, we'll come right. up here. <laughs> I had to think, and I'm just kind of putting some things together. And, um, and why it would be important on the books since we're going after it. And then I just found this amazing verse. And it seemed to me out of context, but... This is in Ezra 4. Yes. It's really, there's a lot of anointing up here right now. It feels go, really go, good. Go, go. <coughs> so um, Ezra 4, I'm going to start in 13 because I'm exploring this, you guys. So now let it be known to the king that if that city is rebuilt and the walls are finished, they will not pay tribute, custom, or toll, and it will be damaged the revenue of the king's. Now, because we are in the service of the palace, and it is not fitting, ho, oh, for us to see the king's dishonor, therefore we have sent a inform and informed the king, so that the search may be made in the record books of your fathers. Can you write that? Um, down. Fifteen. Ezra, That's uh, four fifteen. Four fifteen. Can you send that to me. Record books of your fathers. So there's the father. Yeah. Now. now Generationally, this could be awesome. And you will discover in the record books and learn that the city is a rebellious city and damaging to kings and providences, I'm getting drunk now, and that they have incited revolt within its past days. Therefore, the city was laid waste. Wow. Well, there's the curses. Barbara, I think that uh, we have another book. Or a chapter in a book on library. Okay, what I'm, else are you getting? I'm feeling some like the Lord going through the back, uh -huh. like that dark. Because that would be that would be the generational the line. The generational line, and He's correcting. That's what I'm feeling right now. I mean, okay. I literally feel it pulling. Okay, now the, the back. now see the angel's gone now, so the message is done. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. Okay, Brian, I think that um, you're going to have an inspired. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. A question first. Yes. Kind of twofold. Um, in, in response to what your comment you just made about uh, if you have a word, you can sit down and, yes. and hold it. Um, I've, I'm just kind of wanting to throw this out there. In, in my experience, when I've had to give words and there's been an anointing yes. and an unction on me to do so, when it's not been able to be fully released for whatever reason and then permitted to come out at another time, it, it's wimpy. It just doesn't have the, yes. the, it's a weak. It doesn't have the effect and the power and the authority on it. And what I noticed is when, when this other woman was standing in front of you, I saw before you got up, there was a being off oh. of the right soldier, right of her shoulder. You walked up into it. That's why you got into that. Wow. You walked into it. I, what I sensed is that it was an authority. And oh. that's why when she started to speak the word, it came out There's with authority more right here. of an authority. Yeah, that's right exactly where it was. Yeah. So what my, my thought is, is when there's an authority present, then there's a timing for a release. So I'm not always in agreement, 
that you can go sit down and release the word later because God is a God of timing and a God of protocol. And when there's a being there or something that's giving you an anointing and an unction to step out and you wait, then you lose the moment and the timing. So then when you do deliver it, if you deliver it late, it doesn't have the impact. I, I would agree, but <clears throat> here, here's the, the dodginess. The Lord does things in unity and, and with protocol, and so the burden's on the leadership. And, and the burden with you is that you submit to the leaders. That's, that's the burden you have. And as leaders, we can miscall. Now, I, I feel like it's less likely, since I sit with Brian, that I'm going to make a mistake. And in fact, I found out sometimes you have three people, it gets less likely. Because with in three, and so while that may be true, the kingdom of God still continues. And, and our, the, now, the problem with you or with me, if I have that, and this has happened to me too, where I knew that I had something and it was not acknowledged, then, then you just release that to the Lord. Now, what you also can do is you can write it down and then give it to the leader so that, so that it, has, it has that moment. But I understand it's really hard, especially it appears that you two are leaders. So when you get in the midst of other leaders, then it gets really, really complicated. But that, I think that's a decently in order part. And hopefully, you know, in this kind of situation where we have freedom. Now, I would also, see, we're getting close to the end. I might cut us off. I, I've done this when I've been at conferences where there, there's a team of people fixing meals. And I say to those people, what you're doing is also important. And so, and the Lord will, he always stops on time. Mm-hmm. And so you, you may be at, uh, you know, we have four, like, four, maybe four minutes. So you may be four minutes from now and you have something, and it's true you have something, but as a leader I say, I don't think so. Now, the hard part for you is say, okay. Yes. Especially when you know it's right. <laughs> right. But, but I, 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 we want to create an atmosphere where we honor and treasure you as much as we can, but there's also humanity in all this. <laughs> and we're going to make mistakes. <clears throat> if I may, I wanted to bring up too. That's why often we say the word leader, but the more accurate term I feel would be facilitator. Yes, I agree. And Talk about timing. So we have talk about timing. the prayer. Okay. So now, see, so this is my default, default evil spot right here. So when I started talking about the library, I realized the Lord allowed me to discern what's going on with all of you now. Because I don't think I've been dealing with this last week or two. But now he wants, I think he wants you to deal with it. Those of you that are on the web or listening. Um, the thought. Just following the, the tracking of earth and in unity. Uh, what came to mind was the question of, is the righteous authorities the ones that are organizing and keeping our books in order inside the library? They, they are definitely involved. When you said that, I felt, got my hit. Mm-hmm. So somehow they are involved with the books. Now, see, that's a new thought. Mm-hmm. Somehow they're involved with the books. Well, they would be the linkage of the blessings, wouldn't they? <clears throat> Excellent. Okay. Huh. Um, let's pray this. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ as, a of my line, as a representative of my family line, and on behalf of myself, behalf of myself I, repent for I repent for documenting movements that you created, Lord, movements that you created, Lord and then attempted to recreate them. I repent for placing priority on the perceived wisdom of man, documenting it, and then procreating that false truth. I now declare in the name of Jesus Christ, as for me and my family, my, the priority is on your living word. Lord, I ask that you would now destroy all false or ungodly books, all ungodly records. Please dismantle 
all ungodly libraries and send any ungodly librarian where you want it to go. Lord, I pray that you would unlock your books, your truth, in your timing and give us your wisdom to understand it. Thank you for joining us here for this hour on Aslan's Place Exploring Heavenly Places. Uh, today we have two additional sessions that will be uh, recorded, and it'll be interesting to see what happens. So thank you for joining us. Thank you.